Hello, my lovelies. So today we are going to do another plant pot video. If I uh, do a thing, shall we see what thing I can do here? So, yeah. Over here you can see some of my plant boys. A couple others down here. And then there is this one here. This is the previous plant pot I painted. However, now you can see I'm going to upgrade today. This is a slightly large plant pot that I am uh, going to attempt to paint for you guys today. So let's put that camera back. So, yes, hello my lovelies. Today we are going to be painting a massive plant pot. Now here it is. I spent the last couple of days thinking about what I wanted to paint on this massive plant pot. And I think, I think I've come to a conclusion that I quite like. So I am just going to get started. So there were two brands that really had a colour variety and I just got a couple of colours from each just to have a look at what I thought worked and really to widen the variety of colours that I could work with. So I've got this white one called Daisy, there's a purple berry and a lemon tree out of these Ron Seal garden paints. Long lasting colour, waterproof, protects something, it just says protects, it must be protects the thing that it's painted, probably if you're painting wood, and rainproof in one hour, so you need to leave it dry for one hour, and that's white, purple and yellow. So then I got these itty bitties, and look how cute, look how cute these little tins are. And these are Caprinol, Caprinol, I don't know, could be one anything. Weather protection for six years, colours and protects wood, terracotta, stone and brick. Garden shades. So I've got sage, which is quite a dark green. I've got black ash, which is a black for those details I was thinking. And a forget-me-not blue, which I want. Shall we see what the forget-me-nots look like in here and if they're the same colour? I feel like that's something I want to do. No! Fuck! You know that box didn't have a secure bottom? Mm -hmm. This blue and this blue, to me, do not seem the same colour. Am I in the right place? Maybe. Sure, let's try that. But hey, not the point. The point here is to paint me one big ass flare pot. Why is my seat so long? It's so short. That's better. Can't really touch the ground, but hey ho, I'll be tall enough for the flower pot. So, I've got my paint. Where was I? Have my paint. Have my paint brushes. Have my handy screwdriver to open my paint pots. Totally didn't forget about that earlier. No. And then I have got some big chunky chalks here. And some all very important masking tape. Very important. So I think I'm just going to crack in. Let's start off with the masking tape. I think my hardest thing is going to be the fact that I just want to turn it upside down all the time. And then I think I'm going to do a line around the bottom as well. Not sure if I want it to go quite as deep though. Hmm, how much of this thinner tape do I have? The 
there we go one big old plant pot ready for painting Now, originally I was thinking about doing a backgroundy wallpaper and then, or well, background, and then drawing the fairies over the top. But maybe if I draw the fairies first, then I can do the background in between. Hmm. Maybe I can draw the fairies and then do the background and then paint the fairies. Now that sounds like a good idea. Else maybe now I've got her body kind of worked out. Where's her other arm gonna go? Her other arm needs to be about here. Maybe there's a bit of a bend in it. Good with chalk to be honest. There we go, she's a bit gawky, but hey ho. And now let's think of some wings to put on her because she's a fairy. Quite like the ones that are on here, they're just kind of a bit droopy. Like butterfly wings. dress on. I could do a little dress. I was really just thinking about keeping them as silhouettes so maybe something very simple. Maybe have it Maybe just leave it as just that if it's can always add a dress later and then of course she's got her hair. One. Oh, this is driving me insane. So I've done my sketch. It is honestly rather appalling, but it kind of plans out where things are going to be. And I think I'm just going to kick into the painting. So I've got some water here. I did have some kitchen roll. There it is. I'm not to make the table water too much. Grab some kitchen roll. So I've got some kitchen roll, I've got some water. And uh, let's just let's just see where things take me. I'm going to see about trying to put these into some kind of order. Ooh, that's quite a nice yellow. With the green. Ooh, ooh. 
an interesting colour. Oh, things are suddenly changing in my brain. So when I started off, I kind of had an idea of how I wanted to colour this. And oh, oh, that's gorgeous as well. And now all my ideas are turning round and having different ideas of what I want to colour everything. So let's have a look at this purple. Oh, that's dark. That's a very dark purple. What a mess I am. What a mess I am. And then here's the last one. This is the black. Oh, and it is. It's not a true black. It's a lot more grey. It's quite grey. Oh, but it's nice. Awesome. So that, I think, makes up my mind about any of the things I was thinking. So, initially I thought I might do the fairies in black and then just have colour around them. I'm kind of thinking about that now, but I'm also thinking maybe also have some black around them and put some purple into the fairies. Leave the wings in that blue colour. Use lots of whites and blues in the top. And then... Uh, use some of those not whites and blues, whites and yellows in the tops and the green and the black at the bottom. Now I did kind of the reason I put these colours so close together is because I kind of wanted to see how they blended. But I think this is something I can experiment with on the pot. So let's just crack in. I can be an awful lot of a perfectionist in my drawing sometimes and I'm trying to get better at not letting the little things bug me. Like when a colour's not quite right. So I'm concentrating really hard, which is making it difficult to talk, and also I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to be talking as well, which is not so good, really. I'm enjoying how this paint selection is looking. I feel like these swirls are going quite well, actually. So they are quite infuriating to draw because it's always a matter of where do you finish each one. And where do they start? Hey Mars? Yeah? I might do the background and then leave it to dry and then finish it. Because uh... I've just gone directly over the top of all the chalk that I drew on. But I do have a really cool idea. Mm -hmm. So, I'm doing a couple of fairies. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do a little black face with golden eyes on the other side. Right. What do you think? So the reason I'm doing this, and the reason it's got a little cat on it as well as my couple of fairies, is that this is going to be a gift. And uh, I wanted it to be something special. So there's a bit of a story here. Now at the beginning of lockdown, some of you may know, my cat Artemis disappeared. Well, we saw her at the top of the garden and she got a spook and she just ran off. And as much as we walked around and caught her, she wasn't coming back. So we put up posts online saying, 
Hello, help, our cat is missing. If you've seen this cat, her name is Artemis. She's a bit skittish. She's probably hiding somewhere in a shed or in your garden. Please let us know. And this went on for a fair while with us not really hearing much, which was uh, quite sad. And Moss was worried and I was worried about our other cat as well because like, she's used to having company. When we adopted them, we actually rescued the two of them together. They were a mother-daughter pair, ages eight and 12. And we were told they needed to be kept together because they'd always been together. Now, when we, uh, we didn't get, we only got them in the last autumn. So we haven't had them a huge amount of time. It's just beginning to get to a point where Artie, the more timid of the two, was beginning to trust us enough to sit on our laps and such. So when she disappeared, we were really worried. And uh, as time went on, it felt less and less like we were going to actually see them again, which was sad and worried. we'll see her again. And we were kind of telling ourselves that, you know, someone's probably feeding her. She probably ran off and found a nice little place to hide from whatever had spooked her and now couldn't work out her way back. And some nice person was probably feeding her. But I still kind of wanted her back, and I was quite worried about Percy because at the moment, like at the beginning of the lockdown, neither of us were working. Now I'm working, but Mars is still on furlough. And then but he's going to be going back to work soon, and you know, stuff's beginning to happen. And we were really worried that Percy would just be lonely on her own in the house she's not really used to it. So we were talking about maybe getting another kitten, but that's awkward and difficult and we still weren't really sure what Percy wanted to do. So one night, it's quite late, this is months, months after Archie Party disappeared. I'm on my laptop and I'm just going through the cat protection posts and I'm on one of the cat protections posts and I'm looking through looking for the one that said Archie was missing just so I can see if there's any new comments and I find it miles down their page and it's just sitting there with a couple of comments and one of them is from a lady saying This looks a fair bit like the cat that's been visiting me. And so I messaged them and I'm like, you say this looks like a cat that's been visiting you? Is she still coming round? Do you know if she's safe? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, pretty much she told us her address, which turned out to be about a mile from our house just in a direction I'd never really ventured before. And it turns out a mile in that direction is just beautiful, lost, middle of nowhere countryside. So our kitty cat had, to, had the smart sense to go somewhere away from the roads, away from the town, away from all the other cats we're guessing, and found herself on this farm where we're guessing she'd been living off birds and mice and hunting for herself. So we went to these people's house and we sat in their garden and we spotted her twice. The first time I think we gave her a spook because we were looking under around the outhouses and stuff and she was hiding in an outdoor cat house that they had near their shed and she rushed off. And then a couple of hours later she showed back up again near one of the paths outside the back of the garden and just watched us for a moment and then slinked off. So she, we knew she was there and we knew she was safe. And uh, 
And it then became a matter of how do we get her home without, you know, how do you catch a cat, really? It's not the easiest thing to do. So we'd had some advice from a friend to bring the other cat and then maybe if they hear Percy whining, if Artie heard Percy whining in the garden, she'd come to investigate. So we took, we stuck Percy in a cat box and we took her round and we sat in the garden and let Percy grumble about being stuck in the cat box for about, oh, maybe half an hour. We didn't want it to be too long because we didn't want Percy to get upset for too long. You know, she's a good girl. She doesn't deserve to be tortured. So. That didn't work. We sat there, we had a cup of tea. Percy knew she was quite vocal, it was quite good. Although she never sounded in too much distress, more just let me out, human. You've put me in a box and I disagree. <laughs> so we brought her home, and that was the day that Moss ordered a cat trap because we had spoken to Cats Protection and asked them if they'd lend us one. And they said that they weren't lending them out at the moment because of COVID-19. So Moss just bought one at that point. So the next weekend we potted around to this house and we took the cat trap and we set it up and we had a cup of tea and we natted for a little bit. And then we left because I had stuff to do. And they're not and then the next morning, I woke up to a photo of Artie sitting in the cat trap, just not far enough in to actually have set off the mechanism. Just enjoying. I think she likes she likes low little places, so she was just enjoying being in the hidey hole, probably. But, uh, yeah, I woke up to that photo, and that was very exciting. And then we hoped that maybe we'd get her back the next night. And we didn't. I think that she uh, knew what we were up to at that point, and had started to think about things like, how far into this trap was she going to get? So, the night after that, the night after that I was at work, and I come out of work and I'm on my break and I just see a couple of me messages from this lady and uh, I missed school. And I didn't even have to open the messages to know that that meant that she had caught the cat. So I was at work, so I called Moss and I was like, Moss, got to go, got to go now. They've caught the cat, so that's Archie, we'll save in a box. And Moss went to get him and that home, I, that home? That night I came home to a very happy, happy boy on the couch with his cattos. And she's alright, she's uh, we've been keeping a close eye on her because she's been back what, just under a week now. She's, she was very skinny, but that's to be expected, she'd been hunting her own food and That's about it. She she has a couple of sore bits on her, but nothing that wasn't just superficial. She had a scratch on her nose. Uh, she's got a wee bare patch on her belly that looks like she might have had a tick and chewed that out. But she's not really done much since she got home. She's just slept on the couch, and I think she's just going through recovery slowly. She knows she's home because she went back, straight back into her old routines of where she'd sleep and following us to the toilet at 3am. She's very good for that, always protects you when you go to the toilet at 3am. Just what you need from a good cat. And it's good to have her back. We also have Percy, she's been doing all right. Artie Party has not moved since she got back, we don't think. 
she's either lying on the couch, lying on the bed with us, or asleep in one of the, her little hidey holes. If she's not lying somewhere asleep, it's because uh, there is foods or treats to be had. And that's really the only time she moves. So I think she'll get back to her full health soon enough. And otherwise she's doing quite well. She doesn't seem to be too worried. She hasn't asked to go back out again. Percy, on the other hand, since Artie went missing, which was a fair while, she's been allowed to go outside. Well, Artie's not, we're not letting her back outside yet. We don't want her to disappear again. But also, whatever spooked her, I think it's one of the other local cats that's about. And we don't want him to spook her again. But Percy we're still letting outside. And uh, I think that she's all right with everything. She doesn't seem to have too much of an issue with Archie Party being back. She is, as always, being a complete utter queen. Excuse me while I focus on a detail but I'm quite enjoying how this is coming out. I don't think it would be so uh cute and subtle. At the same time, I stopped talking because I was thinking about painting and I was telling you guys a story. Where was I? Yes. Arch Party is back. Percy is also... Oh, she's still a good girl. She's still getting plenty of attention. Don't worry about that. I will not let there be a sudden bout of favouritism for... Archie party so that Percy gets left out. We have decided that since Archie was away we started giving Percy the odd piece of ham as a treat and now there's ham in the fridge that is solely for her and we've decided maybe to leave that as just a thing for her so that she you know still feels special. And we're still letting her go outside under a watchful eye. And uh, the other night she brought a mouse in, which was quite exciting. It was the second night that we'd let her out since since Artie Party had come back. And Moss was a little worried because she didn't come back in at the same time we did. Which is understandable. And uh, I said to him, I was like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll hear her because she'll be out when she comes in. And boy, did we hear her when she came in. There was an utter crash and then a meow and then we, uh, Moss ran through. And uh, turned out the reason she'd been out for so long was because she was out catching mice. So we had to separate the cat from the mouse as we caught the mouse and set it free back outside so it'd be safe. From Kitty Cat. Kitty Cat's caught a couple of treats while they had to wait in the living room. While we caught this mouse. I did feel while we were trying to catch a mouse, my bedroom unorganised and rearranged of all the furniture in the wrong place and the two of us trying to catch this tiny jumpy little field mouse that this is exactly why people have cats so they don't have to catch the mice themselves but you know if you have the opportunity to help the poor wee thing Percy gets fed enough anyway it's not like she needs to eat mice to survive 
I think she was just trying to prove to Artie Party that she could hunt too. But, uh, no, they're good girls. However, story, yes, lovely lady who caught our cat. And she'd been feeding her for a while, like, once we knew that she was there, we kind of wanted her to stay there, so we asked this lady if she could feed Archie and keep her close, so maybe she'd get more comfortable and we'd be able to lure her towards the... into the house, maybe, so that we could catch her that way. So we'd given this lady some food, and she'd... And her husband, I must add her husband. Her husband was also lovely. But all my correspondence was with her. So they'd been feeding Artie for a bit before Artie got trapped. And I wanted to make sure that she had a nice gift as a thank you. And uh, one thing I noticed all these days while we were sitting in her garden drinking tea and talking about cats was that she did have a really quite beautiful garden so we thought whatever we got her as a thank you had to be something along that side so a flower pot seemed to fit the bill I'm quite liking how that's looking actually so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this to dry a little bit and then I'm going to redraw on all the fairies because I think they, oh I've lost them entirely in my painting of this backdrop which I feel has come out quite well. I've still got this little cat face here that's, uh... yeah well it's there. I might just paint in from that a little bit. So I think I will leave that there for now. Let that dry and then come back in a bitty to do the next level of detail. So this is the lovely arty party. Who I don't think you've met before, because she disappeared before I started doing videos. She's a bit shy. But I've got a photo of her down here for a reference with this kitty face on this, and I'm not... I'm not sure how with these colours to get the goldy brown I want. So I might just have a... Oh, did I just get paint on my card here? I'm not sure. If I just have a wee play with the colours here on the cardboard. Because that's my pot, my paint pot nearly dry. And then we're going to have a, another go at drawing those fairies. Maybe see if we can't make them look a bit more realistic, a little bit less terrifying. I seem to have acquired a spoon at some point during the last bit of filming. Definitely wasn't because I'll be some shepherd's pie. But here we are. And I think I'm going to start here where I was going to draw this wee kitty cat. I need a white white pencil, I think.
So I've just been working on this little kitty face, which is a, a little terrifying to be entirely honest with you. I don't, I very seldom draw animals and try and make them look like animals, unless they're under the water. Under the water seems easier, maybe it's because you don't have to deal with fur or feathers. I'm not sure. But I don't usually draw animals which have fur. I feel like I may be just a bit nervous about the shading and detail of such a thing. Just get more kitchen more around while I'm at it. I'm just trying to get this little kitty face right. I've got a bit of a reference down here, but I've not got hugely high hopes in my ability. So whether it looks anything like the reference or not, I'm not sure. And I'm just doing this dabby dab type thing. Just trying to see if I can get a bit of that patchiness that her face has. So I'm going to come back to that and do some more detail once it dries. Let's have another wee think about these fairies, shall we? This pen really isn't working as well as I would have liked. Can I have something in here that might work better? Let's try this pencil that I have. I am happy with that little cat there. I think that she looks quite good. So there we go. Well, I'm quite pleased with how that's come out. It's uh, it's looking lovely. Hopefully, I will. When it's dry, I will take a photo, and there can be a photo while I'm talking about it, perhaps. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased how it came out. The fairies are all a bit. Their limbs aren't quite the right proportions, they're not quite the right shapes and lengths. But I don't think you can really tell. I like how their wings have come out in that blue. Absolutely loving the swirly swirls. I feel like it really does show out the inspiration that I was looking at. And the kitty came out an awful lot better than I was expecting. So, thank you for watching, as always. Have an amazing day, and uh, yeah, so thank you for watching my video of me planting this massive plant pot. It was quite fun to do, it has taken me a couple of hours, not going to lie, and uh, I'm quite pleased with the outcome, so yeah, I'm ex excited for this one. Looking forward to giving it to... Mr. and Mrs. D, who I am very happy have helped me get my cat back, a little arty party. So you'll be seeing lots more of little arty party in the videos, I'm sure, coming up, as she is not allowed outside at the moment, so she has got to stay in the house of us. I don't think she minds, she's just been sleeping the entire time that she has been home. But, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching this episode of... <laughs> what is this an episode of? 
Thank you for watching this episode of Plant Pots. Have a lovely day, stay safe, and rock on my lovelies. Wow. <laughs>